it's important. I, you know what? Did he? Did I have it up here? No, it's not. They won't let me. I don't know why they haven't well, let me save it. But I kind of caught a gist. I kind of caught a gist of what y'all was talking about, though, and I agree. You know, like um, you know, for example, like I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a sergeant, and like I tell, I just had a roll call the other day before shift started, <clears throat> and I tell my people all the time. I don't care if we get a call at a $25,000 trailer park or we get a call at a $25 million home. Everybody is ma'am. Everybody is sir. Thank I don't care. If we encounter, I don't care if we encounter somebody with a $2,000 tailor suit or, or, or dress or we encounter somebody with a dirty white t-shirt and ripped up pants and some tore up Crocs. Everybody is ma'am. And everybody is sir. The, the, the people who may live more fluently, they're not ma'am and sir. The people who live less fluently, they're not bruh or bro. And uh, that, I don't, I don't like that. That just that's the, and what people fail to realize. And I tell my people all the time: we work for the public. We are no different from Chick Fil A workers. It's my pleasure. We may, yeah, we carry a badge and a gun. Our job a little bit more dangerous, but we are here that's to serve. True. We are here to serve the public. I'm talking about. I'm talking about as far as, as, as the mindset, as wanting to take care of the public and, and 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 provide a service to the citizens. That's the mindset. I'm not saying we are the same. I'm just saying we need to have that mindset because some people they put on this uniform and they think that they're Superman. When I guarantee you, if I told you, if I told some of these officers, you know what? Before you become a police officer, you got to work. You got to work eight months inside of a prison. They would never be in law enforcement today because anybody can act tough and be tough. A tough guy. With the Glock 17, is 17 rounds in it. This is what it is. Oh, I was just going to say, you guys are open on Sunday. <laughs> 24 hours. I, I pre Hey, Jack Frost, you sound like we've been here before. You've been here before? Yeah, I've been here before. I just changed my name periodically. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. You Jack, you, you are absolutely right. Um, when, when you're surrounded by people that will unalive you on a daily basis and you're in there for 8, 12, 16 hours a day and then you you have to deal with them, you have to you have to know how to carry yourself and conduct yourself and then you come out to become a, a, a street officer you, you kind of carry that respect with you, just saying definitely agree, I definitely agree because well, I'm glad that, that, was, that was the most humbling experience for me was knowing that I was not in charge uh, even though I wore a badge, even though I worked inside the facility, I was not in charge. They dictated if I made it home that night or not. Exactly. Home. Inmates let those correctional officers go home. And that's why I don't understand why people in law enforcement, the ones who carry the, the gun, they look down. Yeah, yeah. I, like, for example, law enforcement officers, police officers, right? We get They give us free Chick-fil-A. You know, they, sometimes the gas stations let you get stuff, you know. But it really should be those correctional officers, right? And people tend to look down on correctional officers. But like you said inmates allow correction officers to go home an inmate can tell a correction officer hey look tomorrow at 5 30 we 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 we're probably gonna stab you and there's nothing you can do about it you because you have to go count them whatever your, your time frame is and people don't understand that but when you work inside that prison and you then you become a police officer you exactly. put, so you, you yeah, tend well, to be a, a far greater police officer there, see there there's a thing called fight or flight and in prison you do not have the opportunity to take flight it's very true. It's nowhere to go. It's nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and what people don't fellow realize, man, is in the prison where the prison I worked at, because I started off in the prison, we didn't, we weren't, we weren't allowed to carry OC. Only the lieutenants could carry OC. We didn't, you didn't have a, you couldn't carry a knife in your pocket. You couldn't carry a, a taser. The only thing that you had was your radio, your uniform, and the two hands and the mouth that God gave you. And that's what you learned. This, this right here, the, this picture with the uniform, that that was what we wore inside of a, a, a prison. I mean, we didn't have any, we didn't have any equipment to, uh, other than OC to, to keep us from being involved in a situation. Hey, I love you, Larry. Uh, uh, Lawrence, you got guards in here. Hello, brothers. Hey, guy, what's up? Did <laughs> thirty-one years we're behind the bars. Oh, hey, that's tough, right there, man. With much respect. Tank and, and, see, and Old Folsom and Gladiator School. But I, had, I was in California. We had baton spray, and uh, we had some good toys. Uh, after you know, after the '80s, we got some fun stuff. But yeah, no. But see, the, the hardest part about working in, in corrections with with this topic is when you have to walk out somebody that you you worked with on a daily basis. 
you you interacted with that person, you got to know that person, and then they fucked up by fraternizing with an inmate, or yeah. they, they were bringing stuff into the facility, or something like that, and you end up having to walk that person out. That is the worst feeling ever because you oh, trusted sure. that person with your life, and when you find out that they put your life and everybody else's in that facility at risk, that is the worst feeling. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you, Kev. I absolutely love taking a dirty cop into custody. I love it. No, no, no. I'm, I, I'm, I agree with that. But I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, real quick, Kevin. Can you, hey, um, Jack Frost? Can you say that one more time, please? I, I, I absolutely love taking a dirty cop into custody. I, I, I absolutely. That's that's one of the, that's that might be the best arrest anybody any law enforcement officer could ever have. I, and like you said, Kev, because when you think about cause when he, what, what Kev mean by the worst feeling, it's just that thought that you were you were you were cool with somebody who was a coworker who who was actually making the facility or your or your beat far more dangerous than the actual criminals. What? Hey, can I ask a question? Um, what uh, state were you uh, working as guards? I, I was. I'm in Colorado. Okay. So we implemented a lot of things from California. Yeah, I tell you what, you guys right there, I have a lot of respect for you because, my God, the conditions you guys worked under, and we used to um, go out of state to, like, probably Colorado. I know we had to go to Ohio and straighten out some prisons. But I can watch a video, and it scares the heck out of me of what was allowed inside the walls. I mean, I see egg crates and cells. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. You know you know oh why, though? God. The governor, the, the past governor stated that we don't house any violent inmates in the state. Oh, so, yeah. So they were, they, they have just implemented it in our level five facilities here, like CSP, which is Colorado State Penitentiary, which is like where the hard and hard criminals go. You know what I mean? Um, the, the, the ones that are validated gang members and stuff like that end up being housed there well they started those those guys are housed in two-man cells and now they're letting those guys out into a day hall together as a complete unit so the the amount of violence has escalated oh, I, don't yeah. know if you, I don't know if you have wow. seen that or not well, have you seen what going on in cali well, well death row the, inmates the, thing, the, thing, the, the way it works lawrence is so you have two you have two validated gang members that get housed in this facility those two validated gang members can be of the same gang so they're going to be housed together then there's going to be two validated gang members of a rival gang or whatever and they're they and they have issues with those guys but they're going to be housed in the same unit just across the tier from each other right right well, the governor stated that we don't have any violent inmates anymore so they started to implement where you open up those units and put them into a day hall together. So then you have two rival gangs that don't like each other into a day hall together. They're mostly peaceful inmates. Yeah, they're all sweet, aren't they? Hey, you guys are going to get all California's garbage if you haven't got it yet. They're shutting down Death Row and letting Death Row inmates go on main lines in other states. Oh, so yeah. So they can pay restitution to the victims. That's California, I left California eight years ago and moved to Arizona. Best move I ever did. I watch that stuff and it just agitates the living crap out of me. And, and see, the, 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 a big problem that I see with that that's going to be happening here is Colorado's gang politics follows Southern California's gang politics. Really? So, so when you have that kind of influence coming in here and, and, and the, the fluctuation, the fluctuation uh, amongst the inmate population is going to change and you're going to see a lot more violence oh yeah we we sent when i was working i retired eight years ago we were sending inmates out of state that were nobodies these guys were and i see them on videos and they're like running prisons in other states they were nothing but like we send like these guys and they're out there running stuff and it's like because they, they see the holes they said oh man this is good i can make some money selling drugs here and and uh, wow, I'm a big shot here, but oh, I feel sorry for the other states. California really is doing a dirty thing right now. Sending all these, I seen that on death row. I was like, oh my god. Ugh. Send them to Georgia. We don't mess around. <laughs> they don't want no problem. They don't, they're gonna have some problems. Huh? Hey, I don't. <laughs> in California, when I was working, you could shoot an inmate. 
that was attempting to escape over the fence. Now you can't. You have to call the outside sergeant, and he has to come tell the guy whatever you're arrested. We used to, that was like not a dream, but um, if someone hit the fence and you're in a gun tower, I mean, I had 120 <laughs> rounds in the tower. <laughs> you know, we had one guy do it on the yard. He was in a RC jumpsuit, orange jumpsuit. So my buddy was up in the tower. I was on my desk. And a dude hit the fence. Let me and tell he you. Hit the second one, and my buddy shot at him 10 times and missed him. I said, dude, what were you aiming at? Listen, in Georgia, if you if, if you even look at the fence too long, you won't have a problem. They don't play that in Georgia. You touch that fence, you touch that fence, you will be engaged. Let me We we have a we have a kill fence here, um, here in Colorado. Let me ask um let me welcome in Purple because he was in. He's been here for a little bit. Welcome in Purple. Hey Purple. Hey, how are you doing? I had to wait for my mic to come on. Uh, how are you doing? I am a female. I know everybody's used to everybody being in law enforcement awesome. being a male, but I'm I'm a female. I'm retired captain from the mid south from out of Nashville. Uh, was uh, uh, on for so twenty. Let me ask. Years. Let me ask you a question, oh, Captain. Uh, Sorry. You know, is that okay? I call it Captain. You want to be purple? Uh, I I can be okay. purple or Captain. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I thought she was gonna sing that song for a second. Purple rain. I'm actually saluting no. her right All now. Right. I can be purple. I can be blue. Or let me ask. <laughs> I'm at full That's attention. Uh, let me ask a purple question. Out of the twenty some odd years that you worked that. as a um um or the time you worked in your career as a captain, um, how many times did you have to deal with mm -hmm. police officers negative interactions with members of the public and they in their own mind they just couldn't understand that they couldn't say certain words? That was every day after I became a sergeant and I wanted to go ahead and give props to Jack Frost. Um, you, you'll be a chief one day. Um, you've got really good thinking. If you just, just, just focus on the studying, maybe hit the national Academy, man, you got it. You got it. You're very articulate and, and you got, um, uh, you're smart. You Thanks a lot. You, you know, Thank policy. You. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, since I was a Sergeant, I've had to deal with officers that did things to the public, uh, said things to the public, um, even, uh, you know, because I was in the South, the chewing tobacco and the spitting, the spitting of the tobacco juice out was was offensive to some folks. Um, a lot of the tattoos are offensive, and I'd have to explain, um, you know, what about your tattoos are offensive to some folks. Uh, so it, it was a constant thing, um, explaining it. But one thing I will say about my, my department is that we constantly changed our policies or, or just you know, adapted our policies to what's going on with the community as as we speak. Um, we were one of the first uh, big small cities. With, that's what we like to say. It's a big, but, but it's smaller than like Tampa or something. But it, it's a big small city. But we're one of the ones, one of the first ones to not um, focus on um, little small misdemeanor crimes and uh, putting people in jail for that. So we were the ones that uh, we less criminalized marijuana if we caught you with it. If it wasn't a large amount, it was just for personal use, then we wouldn't criminalize it. Uh, so, but yes, I mean, we, we did deal with officers um, that that did speak out against people, and I have to explain it to them. I mean, you, you just have to explain it, like a rebel flag. You can't have a rebel flag uh, emblem on your uniform. You can have an American flag emblem because the department right. allows that, but you can't have a rebel flag. And but it's my culture. No, it's not. It, it's offensive to some people. It's, it's it may be your culture. You can have it now, at home. Now, but not now, I just got to tell you um, something, uh, Captain. Just so everybody knows, everybody's been here a while that knows me. Um, I was a trainer uh, and and I was a field training officer, and it's very difficult. Now the trainer to eat the people that are coming in. It's easy to train them and get them on the right track and keep them on the right track. Um, I, they actually still call me. But it's very difficult talking to veterans, explaining to them that members of the public don't like certain words. So I, as, as who was a, a veteran, I knew not to say certain words to members of the public to get them upset. You know, like, um, I, I, I'm trying to pull up this video right now for some reason. I had a problem with the video. 
Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that I get people. I want people to understand that you know, it, it, a lot of more. We have a lot more people coming here sometimes that are um, just members of the public, and to get them to understand that we also combat those same officers. We ha- we have to explain them all the time. No, this is not the right thing to say or the right thing to do or the right thing to wear. You know, these are the things that, you know, but from my point, from my position, I have more power of the, the new people versus um, the what you had, you know. So I, I, I it was it was more difficult. So if it was, I'm, I'm sure it's just so difficult for you as, you know, even though I still kind of said things to I addressed some situations to veterans, but it was like talking to a wall. So that was it was really difficult. But. Um, I appreciate you coming up here and explaining that because a lot of people don't know that it's a it's it, it, it's almost, I hate to say a constant fight, but it kind of is because like I, I I saw a guy on TikTok the other day and he used a retaliatory what I call a retaliatory stop and um, he wrote he, he tells the story he he stopped this person he had um the person had like five issues and he says i decided to write him too he got upset the person got upset and decided and wanted a supervisor so in return the officer said you know what instead of writing the two i'm gonna write the five anyways and i'm like no you shouldn't have done that you should have kept it what it was you should have kept it the two you 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 you, you, that was your word keep your word and don't make it retaliatory you i i get it people are already you know are upset about tickets you know, you get you get a ticket. No one's happy about paying a fine. I don't know anybody going. Yeah, I can't wait to pay this hundred dollar fine. I don't know anybody that's happy about that. And so, people, members of the public, will get angry. They get upset, and you got to give them that opportunity to. You got to be understanding about it. And I think some officers don't try. To, they don't want to be empathy. They don't want to show empathy, and put themselves in that person's shoes to understand. You know, all right, settle down. Settle down. I apologize, but this has to be done. But to, to say, I'm going to give you five more now because I want a supervisor, that, that just not only creates the problem with the members of the public, it, it creates other problems with other police officers. Because, you know, when that police or another police officer meets this other member of the public, they're, they're facing that problem that that other police officer created. And that's, that's, that's why I have these lives. And, and if I could just say something really quick, and then I'm going to have to drop because I've got a couple of showings today. I'm looking, I'm trying to move. Uh, but but you're 100% right that one officer um, that makes that contact, it could totally, not even the person they're talking to, but anybody who's walking by or anybody who's driving by, they can get a bias against officers. So even if somebody's going to complain on me, and I know they're going to complain, and, and we agreed, even if I saw five violations, Um, If they're going to complain, fine. Now let's make this a teaching lesson about the tickets and how to take care of them. And maybe you can sway that mind. But unfortunately, we do work for people. We are servant minded as as law enforcement officers, the same as any government person. Anybody who works for the government, you're there to serve the citizens. They pay your salary. And again, that's stopping uh, or, or, or just acknowledging what Sergeant Frost said. And you know, I'm, I'm incredibly uh, happy to hear, you know, supervisors, first line supervisors, especially oh, talk like Jack Frost is talking. Uh, it gives me hope. It gives me hope that, you know, everything that we fought for uh, retired Elio Lawrence um, back in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. I don't know when you came on. Um, everything that we yeah, everything that we did show is showing with Jack Frost and just listening to him talk. So um, that's a good thing. We need to get more officers like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you just have to be careful and, and just make things a teaching moment. If it's safe, if they're not escalated, if it's a de-escalated situation, of course, take that time and say, hey, you got to have a seatbelt on because that's the number one killer for people when they're driving. It's, it's not having a seatbelt on. If you have a crash, there's nothing to secure you in a car. Just start talking to them and, and then maybe it won't be such a big issue. And if they have kids in a the car, then it, it just spreads. It just spreads this goodwill way of talking to people. I mean, we are correction officers, and I know there's a few of them on this panel. I want to say thank you for your service. Thanks for what you guys <laughs> do. I, I couldn't do it. 
Do it. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. And oh, I, I wanted to touch kind of on on the 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 language, right? Because, like like Jack said, if if a lot of these officers worked in, in corrections, they wouldn't be able to speak to the public, or they wouldn't speak to the public voluntarily the way they do openly. Because I mean, something something that you you would think that would be simple, somebody seatbelt is off. Some something that sounds simplistic to to you as as a general off, uh, police officer, right? Could cause you to get into a fight in prison because it's derogatory. Wow. Hey, if I could kind of touch on that, um, I'll even I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. But just seeing how things are nowadays, you know, with with how escalation is, you you're likely to run into the same types of problems. Maybe not as frequent, but definitely likely to run into the same types of problems in your in your, in your everyday interaction with the public. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you talk to some people kind of crazy, it, the people nowadays, it's, it's not even a matter of, you know, fear in the police. They don't respect police, that's for sure. You know, because of, you know, interactions like this that you see. And then, you know, to touch on that, I, I, I want to say, if I'm talking about the same video, where he, you know, boldly oh. turned his body cam off. Because yeah. again, his ego was hurt. Right? So, so let me turn the body cam off. But the, her 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 audio device is still recorded because you know he was wrong. But the stuff like that is oh absolutely. But I mean I've seen I've seen plenty of videos on this app where an officer, the call. where an officer has addressed somebody and they have called him a punk or they told him to stop stop being a punk or something like that. And if you do that to a, an inmate, that those are fighting words. Calling somebody a punk behind the walls is going to get you into a fight. You're going to get stabbed or or something's going to happen to you. So let me posit a question. Do you think that the level of respect from the public to the officers has changed over the last 20 years since appearance, language, verbiage has changed? Because if you look at it like 80s, 90s, beginning of 2000s, you had to meet a certain appearance, you had to weigh, you had to look a certain way, and I'm not saying color or anything is it, it, there was uniformity so to answer that question i'll answer it like this <clears throat> and um i i didn't police back in the day but the reason why yes it has changed and the reason why there's a big disconnect between citizens and law enforcement is because in today's time you have a command staff that is that consists of command who didn't really earn it they were hand they were hand chosen. And see, see back in the day, see back in see back in the day, most of your command staff, your chiefs, your sheriffs, your lieutenants, your sergeants, your lieutenant colonels, your captains, nine times out of ten, all of them were on some specialized unit. They were either on SWAT, hustling negotiators. They they've been in some type. They were. I'll say it like this: they all were battle tested. But nowadays, you have somebody who's a captain who never arrested nobody. You have people that work. You listen. You in today's time, you have an internal event. You have a internal affairs invest, uh, investigator team who never worked the street before, who never worked the street before, right? Who's telling you what you did wrong, and they never made an arrest. They never were in a fight. They never did a traffic stop. They never even had to do a detailed report. They don't even know how to put evidence in an evidence locker. But yet, they're telling you how to do your job because. In today's time, this in this profession, it is given and is not earned. I've seen SWAT teams Dang. where your SWAT commander wears 400 pounds. They're SOP warriors. I don't, yeah, know, what yeah, they I don't SOP. know what you're doing, but this book says you're doing. Yeah, it but this book says this, but they don't know that they don't know how they don't know that law enforcement out in the field is is fluid. Water, it, you know how water flows and go in a crevice and can come out the crevice. They don't understand that. So in today's time, you the, it's a battle. In, listen, in today's time. Officers who know what they are doing are the most stressed out because if you call out, if you have, because you have sergeants over a shift who go to their subordinates for answers. Yeah. But, but when that's, but when that's, when that officer goes to that sergeant superior who might be his uncle or her auntie or her or her dad's friend or something like that, right? And you say, hey, look, this, this supervisor doesn't know what they're supposed to do. Now you become a problem. Now you're not a team player. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you guys, 
in today's profession is not the citizens. It's not even the criminals. It is the it is the internal stuff that goes on in the profession because nowadays, because your command staff consists of people who didn't earn it, when you show that you know what you're doing, you become an, you're an intimidation now, right? You may take somebody's spot. So guess what? They so in turn, they put you on shifts that you want, don't want to be on, right? They they try to they try to mess up your post, right? They try to write you up and suspend you for any little thing, make work become uncomfortable because they want you to quit because you know what's going on. Okay. So and, yes. And to, and to touch on that a little bit also, right? When a lot of these lieutenants and captains and stuff that get promoted, they know the they know the policies, procedures, book inside and out, but they do not know how to deal with, with the that. public. I agree with that. Not, they do not know how to deal with. They do not know how to deal with with a populace. You know what I'm saying? So they they, they know the policies and procedures, but the policy for might might handle the situation this way if if it, if it falls under these parameters but it doesn't necessarily say how to handle it if it, it falls under these parameters you know what i'm saying so so then that that also starts issues and, and problems because your lieutenant might say oh well you don't know your job well yeah you do i but i'm handling this situation to these parameters and not the parameters that are laid out black and white that's the thing that what Kevin is saying. And also in this profession nowadays, people, if if you you will think, right? So for example, right, you would think that an officer who's very decorated has a good file, right? You'll think, okay, well, this person, this person should be in command or something like that, right? What happens is when you have a command staff that didn't earn it, who are when you don't earn it, especially in our profession, you become hyper insecure. You're very insecure, right? Because when you're insecure and you didn't earn it, the only way you know how to make yourself look good is by what? Making other people look bad. You ever met, you ever met a supervisor who the only thing they could talk about is how many people they wrote up and got fired? That means you're the problem. Ooh. It's not the apples, it's the tree. It's the tree that's rotten. That's why none of, the, that's not none of the apples can flourish because the tree is rotten. But when that tree knows it's never going to get cut down, that's when you have officers who are frustrated at work Take it out on the citizens on that traffic stop. They take it out on the citizens at that call. It's not the citizen. It's the damn supervisors who they can't get around and they can't. It's, it's nothing going to happen. You know what I'm saying? To those poor command staff I, I people. See, but I, I I'm see. done digressing on that because I've been through it. No, no, I understand where you're getting at because the, the sheriff's department and the police department in my community and the the police chief came, he retired for God knows how many years, and then he got hired on to where I'm at. They they both have the similar standards: is that your promotions and your abilities to perform certain details is not just bared about if you're available or how well you do something or how well you know the book. You have to have certain amount of time on on the force, you have certain amount of time with th that department. You have to. Obviously, handle whatever tests you need to do. You got to have certain level of outside curricular tests done. You have to meet everything. They're not just going to give it to you. So you can't be an FTO with Monroe County Sheriff's unless you've had at least wow. fifteen years wow. on the force. Well, you know that's kind of how stuff was before back in Detroit. Like, like for example, there was there, I used to. Uh, I forget one of the guys earlier said, you know, they went from unarmed security to armed security, so it's progression, right? And then they they went to, uh, I believe you said corrections. Me. Before, with Detroit, you would have to have some time on before you could get to a specialized unit. Uh, gang squad, uh, violent crimes, uh, SRT, whatever the case. Um, now, from what I understand, um, they're taking guys to specialized units fresh out of the academy, you know, and it's, it's not to take anything away from these guys. They may, you know, they may demonstrate the skills that, you know, may be needed for those specialized units. But just going back to what he was saying before, you would have to have time on before you could even think about getting on one of those specialized teams. Like he said, battle tested, right? But it's different now. Very, it's very, it's very much so. Because uh, when I got on, when I before I got on SWAT, you have to be able to qualify but now they change the rules up now now in some areas you don't even have to 
shoot above a 90% anymore to be on SWAT. They say, well, as long as your team says you shoot well, you just come to SWAT school, watch a PowerPoint for five days, you're SWAT now, which is crazy. But what? But this one thing I will say, people, That's insane. And, 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 and Lawrence, this one thing that I speak on a lot, but nobody likes to listen to me. Before we promote somebody to be responsible for officers, we, the, the command staff, they are not evaluating a person's outside life i can tell by the way you police how your life outside of work exactly. is. exactly they are not doing that if, if you really because i'm telling you this is just a true thing this is my own opinion but it's a true thing to me people who have miserable lives outside of work tend to be very they they the the command staff loves i'm telling you this is the thing i know command staff that purposely only want people who have miserable outside lives to be a part of that agency. Why? Because if you're like, your, I know your life is in shambles outside of here, right? Which means I can control you. And if I give you a position that you don't earn, you always going to feel like you owe me, right? So I'm not going to put the guy or the female who deserves to be the, the lieutenant or the sergeant. I'm going to give it to the person whose life is in shambles. And guess what? I know I can trust you to do whatever I tell you to do, right? Wow. Because your life outside of here is trash. Right. Yeah, the way it is in Monroe County. Uh, so my neighbor works for Monroe County, and the sheriff came over and knocked on my door to ask me about him. They 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 were getting ready to send him to DRE training, uh, and then he was gonna he was gonna once he got that completed, they were gonna put him in the traffic interdiction unit and get that training. First thing they did before they even gave it to him, they talked to his neighbors. They looked at his social media. They talked to his church. They talked to his family members. They want to know what kind of person he is outside of work, outside of his background check, his credit score. They're looking at everything. Yeah, see, that's that's how the process that's how the process used to be before. I don't know if it still is. Um, and as far as that in depth was going, you know, talking to your neighbors or other contacts listed, but I know that's how it used to be before. You know, investigators come out, talk to your 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 neighbors. You know, ask how your home life was. If there's ever any problems with you or drama, anything like that at home, like you said, churches. You know, friends, all of that. And I I don't, I don't know for sure if this is in depth as it was. Before. It's it's not. It's not. I I feel like before you become a supervisor, they should they should do all those things you said. I, I'm telling you right now, if I was a chief, I'm gonna I I can almost guarantee. I can tell what kind of supervisor person you are by how your front lawn looks. If your if your lawn is nice and groomed, I want to see how your house looks. Since I want to I want to come take a tour of your home, see how clean it is, see how things are out of whack. I want to speak to your significant other, ask them to be true. When they're not being as in depth as they should, be, and I'm telling you, what makes this profession hard is when those people with miserable outside lives bring that to work. And when you have those people over other officers who make it hard for them, because as an officer, there's nothing worse than coming to work feeling like if you make one mistake, you're gonna get written up. That is That's a, that is stressful. That is a stressful. And on top of on top of dealing with citizens, right? And I and I truly believe that because things are, aren't in depth like they once were back in the day before I was even probably even born, it causes officers to be so stressed out. That when that citizen says, hey, why did you pull me up or something, a simple question like that, they kind of go overboard because they don't see, they don't see that it's a citizen. They see that supervisor always giving them a hard time and they go off the uh, off the racks, which not which isn't interesting, interesting Jack, for, uh, and uh, that's uh, how they get themselves in the bind. Appreciate for saying that. Uh, let me welcome in a uh, new Chevy. New Chevy, you here? New Chevy? If you don't respond, we're going to switch you out to a Ford F-150 and give you a wet spaghetti noodle. Hey, before we go to five, I just want to say, Chief Frost 2025. What? Appreciate it. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that is. But, I, guys, I want you, I, I, I like to have this type of open dialogue, and I, especially when this all of us in here to show mem members of the public it's it's not what they think you know yes you guys you know you guys these you got some unprofessional you got some bad cops out there 
but you got good cops trying to do something about it. It's very difficult. It can be very difficult. So, um, um, yeah, I, let me welcome in. Um, is this like Boricua? Boricua, good, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you guys? Good, sir. Did did you have? Did you want to add anything? No. Oh. I definitely wanted to add in on the supervisor thing that he was going with, with being burnt out outside of work. A lot of times they're burnt inside of work, bring that home, and it just becomes a continuous thing at work. And those are going to be your FTOs. Those are going to be your higher ups. Those are going to be your LTs, your sergeants. And it's it's stressful, but that that's just how they are every time. And I you also what? believe that's subjective to the department. And I, I, I gotta say, my department was laid back. We really didn't have, you know, I, I didn't worry about getting written up any of that stuff. I, I that was the least of my problems. I, you know, so I that's why I think that uh, we probably had a better. I mean, based on what Jack Frost saying, I, I, we had a better interaction with members of the public because we really didn't have to worry about that. Only the the, the jerks, the the bad cops, had to worry about that. You know, because they were just they were, they were just idiots. But I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's absolute. But uh, and throughout the department, uh, everybody, anyone else's department, I'm not knocking anybody else's experience. I just know I I, I got it. I feel pretty good based on what you guys are saying. I we didn't have to worry about none of that stuff. You know, I I and I mean, I can I can see where that could be difficult having um um. Your your higher ups writing you up, trying to write you up for whatever reason. It's like you don't have nothing else to do. There's so many things to do, other than messing with your 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 people under you. That doesn't make sense to me. But I mean, I I, I can't get that. But you know, again, this is this is why I have this. Um, I'm just gonna ask Barico, you uh, Barico, yeah. Um, are you law enforcement? Barico, can you hear me? Sorry, I had a That's okay. Are you uh, law enforcement? Yes, sir. I've been oh. my department for about three and a half years. Oh, uh, you're new. You're, I mean, I know you're not new, 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 but <laughs> I, 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 I love guys. I love this because I, 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 let me. You, do you mind? Do you mind if I give you a little bit of advice? Go for it. Great. Under. <laughs> Raise yourself, put your seatbelt on. Under He's going seven hard. years, you you gonna learn. You gonna have this great learning experience. So you will not. You you. I didn't. I I didn't feel comfortable in my fifth year. Right. I did not. I I, I mean, I was okay, but there was a lot to learn under the seven year mark. And once you get to your eighth, your ninth year, it's gonna get really, really good. And I and I and I hope that um um as a as a new person in law enforcement that you really truly understand people it's very important that you understand people because you will be very effective when you understand people and and i'm talking about as little as you stop somebody for a um you know you stop somebody for violating a um you know traffic law and you walk up to them and you tell them um uh this this five things wrong with the vehicle whatever the case may be and you yourself make that decision and say, you know, I'm just going to write you the two tickets. Well, you know, people get upset about that. You know, there are, you know, they got to pay that fine. They don't get upset about that. And I think, and I think as a law enforcement, as a police officer, you should understand people are going to be upset about by paying a fine. There's nothing happy about that. Yet the ending part, of, the end part of this is that no matter what they say, if they say, I want a supervisor, don't be that officer that gets, um, uh, and re, um, to be retaliatory by writing, you know what? I'm writing the five tickets anyways. Don't be that guy. Be the one that just sticks to your word and create that. And, and I know people, you know, it's it's hard to say positive, positive community interaction, but it is positive because no matter what, you stay respectful throughout that interaction, and people will remember that. They will apologize probably at the end of that traffic stop or the next time they see you. Sometimes they'll see, seek you out and go, you know what, sir. You know, the other day, I know you wrote me a ticket. I was wrong. They will apologize. Sometimes you'll get a letter. It, you know, it is, and it's all about you as an individual. So just try to your best to try to be understanding to people and just be respectful no matter the cost. And that's all I want to say.
Hey, Lawrence, it's glad, I'm glad you said that because I will say this. And it's the difference between the times. Lo, the new law enforcement officers that come in today, no offense, they are crybabies. They think, they think when they come in, they're supposed to get a brand new three thousand dollar rifle. They think they they, they they don't they don't they, they think they're supposed to get the shift that they want and it's not supposed to change. They think that they're not supposed to get called in on their off days. They think they're supposed to get off exactly. They think they're supposed to get off exactly at the time they're supposed to get off. They understand that you may have to stay over. It's it's the, the, this law enforcement, I'm be honest with you, this law enforcement today is very much whiny. And another thing too is the law enforcement today, a lot of the new officers have been doing this less than five years. They some of them think because they they think because they have encountered what they believe is a lot. They may have gotten into a foot chase. They may even have gotten into a uh, shooting. They may have went into a domestic that will, became something outrageous. Right. They think because they've seen a few of those things that they have done a lot. And I try to tell them this right here. Just because you have done a lot does not mean you have gotten a lot done. I know people, you ever hear those people that tell you how many years they've been doing this profession? Yes, you may have been doing it for 15 years, but yep. you've been doing it for 14 yep. that's, that's years true. wrong. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? So, 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 so what I try to tell these new officers is, yes, it's good that you, because some people get different experience based on, I know some people, they work at a, a highly influent area, uh, then you might not run into as much crime as you run into in a very low income area, right? You might, it, 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 you right. can't control what right. experiences you get in law enforcement, right? But they have to understand that some things come with time. You might not get a take home car until your third year. Like one person said, you don't even become a sergeant after 10, 15 years at the job. These officers now, they oh, want, FTO. yeah, FTO. Well, they, these officers now, they want to be sergeant SWAT what? six months out of the academy. Uh -huh. And another thing about these super, uh, these uh, officers too, and I think it's on parenting. Is and, and, and I think this is see what's happening now. We're running, we're running into the officers who grew up with their parents, right? They're who who are friends, uh -huh. you know, but they're, they're friends with their parents, right? A lot of these officers cannot take constructive criticism. They can't take it. They cannot handle it, and that causes issues yeah. for supervisors too. So that's the thing too. It's because they've it's never it's heard the term constructive also. criticism. Yeah. All they think is that you're demeaning them. Whereas constructive criticism is literally an FTO's job. I mean, if you're getting yeah. told you fucked right. up, know that you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that means fix it. That doesn't mean go cry and bitch about it. But that's that's just the generation. It's not even, you know, limited. And I, and I, I definitely hear what you're saying, sir. But I, I just want to take it a step further. I don't even think it's just law yeah. enforcement. It's just the generation, period. This is the generation. Are you above 25 years old? That's, you know, that's the problem. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I, 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 I know the reason I, I got to ask this question because I, I re, you know, twenty one year olds getting in this career, boy. I tell you, sometimes I just, I, I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, because men, males at the age of twenty one, we're we're still like sixteen. So imagine, so, so <laughs> I, I think it's great that we that you hire when, when departments hire they hire at the age of twenty five. That's just my personal opinion, all right? Honestly, uh, I agree with that, and I have people at my department who are uh, 21. At my department, they specifically shoot for 21, but in my state, they allow at 20, and it's weird. Six yeah. months before yeah, is six really months weird. before they turn um, 21. I went to the academy. I want to say it's 18 here. That's yeah. good. I want to say Detroit is yeah, that, that's, that's pretty scary to me. Like graduate. <laughs> that's scary. I mean, well, you yeah. you can work as a deputy at the age of eighteen in Georgia, and you get your you get you start out as a, off as a civilian jailer, then you go through the jailer school, then you get some time at as a uh, deputy jailer, and it's then right. when you get within six months or so of becoming twenty one, you can you can start the progress it's, to become you an know, actual I, deputy. At the time that I was uh, um. Ending my career, I more, more, I had a few more years left. Um, I ran into, and I just, these are the millennials, I suppose. They didn't even know how to write a address on an envelope. I, I, I was, I felt like I didn't know what to say. I'm like, you don't know how to write a, you know, sometimes we have to send um, information to someone's home. And this person did not know this adult. 
who was 22 or 23, did not know how to address an envelope. And I'm like, I, I first I thought it was a joke, and you know it wasn't a joke. It's it was it's real. They don't teach that anymore. So there's a lot. We ha- we're yeah, not just cursive writing. Box. They don't teach we're cursive a, writing anymore. Yeah, you know how to sign that's, a check. That's what I was gonna get at. Is like no, we're in a generation that doesn't know how to sign it's, their it's, own name anymore. Yeah, and, and they don't know how to put their thoughts oh, on paper either. God. They need Chat GPT to do that. I, I understand. Yeah, and then yeah. there's a, lot, there's a lot of people don't know that we're trying to address in law enforcement. It's really, it, it, it's it's kind of tough. Let me welcome in Antonio. Antonio, welcome in. Yo yo, what's up? How you doing, sir? Powerful voice. Oh man, it's a beautiful, day. It's a beautiful day. Glad to hear. Glad to hear, sir. Um, I, I, I I'm just asking. Are you law enforcement? You don't oh, have to be. Nah. Okay. 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 Do you like law enforcement? I mean, well, I mean friends, to be like honest with you, man, you got your good cops and you got your bad cops, man. It's, it's 50 50, bro. It can go both ways sometimes. I appreciate that, Antonio. Yes, sir. Um, So, let me ask you have you ever had any bad experience with police officers? Uh, no. Well,. I think I met a couple of them. Some had really bad temper attitudes, like mostly in small towns and stuff. But I live in a big city called Dallas, Texas, and I've been to Texas. Hmm. I've been to Dallas. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, nice. I was in the airport. <laughs> yes, yeah, the cops are well outside the city the limits. Sometimes they can get kind of cranky if you met up like the wrong, like the like. Mostly like the older generations, if that makes sense, though. Oh, I got you. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah. It can be kind of hectic sometimes, though. Let me, let me ask you something, Antonio. Would you ever consider being a police officer? To be honest with you, I always wanted to be a cop ever since I was a kid, man. For real. What's that? Uh, I just want to do something else, man. I'm thinking about joining the Secret Service. Okay, 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 so you, you're, you're, okay, all right, there's nothing wrong with that, definitely nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, and there's nothing wrong with that, Antonio, I, I, I always ask because I like to ask the ones who, um, had a complaint, but then we ask <laughs> them, why college. don't you, I ask them, why don't you like the police, and they'll say, well, why don't you want to be a police officer, when I, and there's nothing wrong with it, and they'll say, well, I don't like people, and I, I think that takes courage to say, that's a lot, you know, because if you don't, there's people, I'm sure there's people, obviously there's people in this career in law enforcement who don't like people and don't need to be in that career. Mm-hmm. Because you, you got to like people, and that's simple as that. I love everybody, no matter who they are, man. What was that? I say I love people no matter who they are. I, I, I No, I completely agree with that. But there's just people who don't like people. They're, they're, they're introverts. And then oh, they yeah. get into this law, they get into this career, you can't be an introvert in this career. <laughs> you just can't. I don't know. I, I, being in trucking, I'm, I've become predominantly an introvert, but I love people. <laughs> but watching. come on, Tim. I listen to you. You, you really know how to. Um, you, you know how to. You have that gift to gab, man. You, you, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I heard you. <laughs> I'm a social butterfly. Good one. I, I've heard you. You're, you're, you're good. I mean, I, I mean, there's some people coming here and they say, you know, the reason I ask that to Antonio is because there are people who say, you know what, I don't like police officers. Then they say, I don't want to be, I would never be a police officer. Why not? I don't like people. So that being said, think of the people you, you don't like being a police officer, but it, you don't like people. Those same people don't become police officers. Uh-huh. And you you kind of don't like yourself. <laughs> so and I'm not, I'm not excusing bad police officers, not at all. I'm not excusing them, because I don't like them either. And I, no, nobody on here that's been law enforcement or in law enforcement, um, um, uh, Jack Frost, if people have, we have people here that they, they don't mind arresting a police officer for doing something stupid, you know, unlawful. They arrest them, and that's it. Simple as that, you know. We just had a captain out here who left. No, no problem with it. And that, that's what we get people here so we can get them to understand that they do get arrested. And, you know, it just doesn't get publicized the way people would like it. You know, I, I, I you know, I'm a nobody. Why would anybody say, hey, you got arrested? Okay. 
you know, nobody nobody really cares if a police officer gets arrested somewhere in whatever Midwest and it was for a DUI. And they're like, okay, you got arrested. If something's yeah. big, we probably have a problem with it, but, you know, I don't know. That's just me. I just saw something about that. I don't know how true it is. They were saying that this guy, he was, in, he was off duty. He was in his patrol vehicle, though, at a bar harassing a chick. And uh, he was under the influence. And uh, what ended happening was he wanted to get into it with some guys on the street. I don't know how true enough the, the story is, but these guys wound up beating them down and, and you know, bloody them pretty bad. And later on, he wound up getting uh, taken into custody because, again, he was going to bars. He was under the influence in his patrol vehicle. And then later on, it, was, it came out that he was supposed to be harassing some young lady I, I, at the bar or something, stopping the way. I feel like you're in the bathroom talking to us. Ain't no way. <laughs> Let me ask Borik, Borik he, because he's, he's younger in your law enforcement. Uh, Borik, let me ask you something. When you were in the academy, did they tell you this? If you were ugly in high school, you get this. You got this pew pew and badge now. You're still ugly. Did they tell you that? Absolutely. Okay. That gets told to every police officer throughout the United States. And that what that really truly means is that if you were ugly in high school and you get this pew pew and bash now you do not become an instant beautiful magnet where these women are just gonna throw themselves at you it just doesn't work that way and i, I have worked with officers now and i hate to say this i'm not gonna i'm gonna say it because because i had to tell the the, the the four in my career that they were ugly and the reason i said that because i didn't really want i didn't want to get in trouble because of what they were trying to do you know so that's that, that i had to stop that but um they, they thought they were instant chick magnets you, you don't become an instant chick magnet. You either you are, or you're not. That's that. That's it. And that's all I'm gonna say to that. I'm not addressing, you know. But I just wanted people to know that it it gets addressed, and it's very hard because there's some blockheaded people. They step in their own way, and that's one of the biggest problems with some police officers. I, there's a study, and I really don't do studies, but they love. There's a study that police officers get in more trouble off duty than on duty, which is crazy to me. Like, just saying, I'm just throwing it out there, but I don't, you know. So, Boricua, I really hope, Boricua, I hope you have a fruitful career. Um, and, and I'm going to tell you, as long as you're professional and respectful, you'll be fine, man. You will be awesome. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, I don't want to toot my horn, but I get that mindset from my and lieutenants and captains and actually my major all the freaking time. I just, I'm really humble. I mean, granted, I grew up with. Uh, parents as police officers as well, but oh, maybe that, helps. Had that mindset as well, <laughs> to just be humble to people. That that helps because my my dad was one too. And do you guys think you know this is the silly part, I, I, the crazy part that no one knows? Back in the seventies, my father was a police officer, and um, people didn't think police officers got unalive. They did. Um, uh, they had bad police. They did something about it, but they more back then. All their officers that got arrested or fired, it was never placed on the news. I was, it was interesting that I'm hearing this from my dad. I'm like, hey, this guy's from the 70s, the 80s, you know, really? So I had to sit down and listen to my dad. He says, oh, yeah, the the the, the, the good cop, we hated the bad cops. <laughs> he goes, they never did nothing in front of us, though. And I'm like, really? Now, I'm not, and I know there's the good, the, the, the good old boys, but my, you know, they're, they're, they have to find each other. But that's what I always tell it, um, um, explain to um, uh, a lot of members of the public they really think that we're all good along we get along it doesn't work that way I, I, I wish we all were on the same page you know some of us are not it looks like Boricua is uh, professional as far as I'm concerned he's you know humble so it sounds like it to me we're everybody's in agreement of, of here how we should treat members of the public I, I, I think that but to let you guys know that um, for those who you know, everybody that's here, we do get people who, we get police officers that come in here, they don't understand, and I kid you not, we, um, uh, I've got some supervisors that come in here all the time, uh, but it's not them. We're, co we're trying to correct them. They don't understand probable cause, and they don't understand reasonable articulable suspicion. Hey, JK and Y, how are you? They don't understand those two, which is very difficult for me because I'm a trainer. I was a trainer, former trainer. That's not mine, I still am. And if you don't understand those basic two, 
then you don't need to be on this. You don't need to be in this career because that can get you into a lot of trouble when you don't understand probable cause or reasonable articulable suspicion. And we've had officers come in here and we've placed them in scenarios and they mess up. And it's fair. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, best way to ex- best way to ex- best way to explain it is, I mean. You polish a turd, it's still a turd, but if you soil the badge, and I think, put a stain I, actually, on the Actually, Tim profession. was in here one time we had a guy. Um, I was trying to tell the guy, do me a favor. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we don't I talk had to about tell that guy. Do me a favor, go back to your state's attorney, your your, 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 your attorney, city's attorney, and ask him. He's going to tell you the accurate information you need to know. I, you, don't just take it from me. And I guess he actually had the number. I think he came back 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And he had to, and he apologized. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, that is, you know, and it's okay. But to be on, to be in that career for that amount of time doing something wrong, that's the problem. You've been, you've been, op, you've been doing your duty in a wrongful manner. And that's the problem that creates you. You may think you're being professional and you might, in some aspect, you know, if your mindset on, you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm professional, but you're, you're doing it wrong the whole time you've been doing it wrong. Woo, that's not showing any positivity towards any other officers that need to, uh, you know, you got, you know, people that follow other good people and it's, that makes it difficult. So it just, you know, I don't, I, you know, I'm not trying to preach, but you know, that's just what I've seen. Jack's Frost seen. Um, 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 I'm sure, you know, um, Tim here, president here, he 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 knows a bunch of law enforcement. He's trying to get out. He's currently trying to get in. Um, um, I don't know if he's still. Are you, are you still trying to get in, um, Tim? Yeah, I have my plans. I'm trying to exercise, okay. lose what this beyond trucker bod. And once this truck's paid off, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for myself to go through the Georgia mandate, and then wherever whoever picks me up is where I'll probably end up going. But I'll have somebody driving this truck so i got you know, passive income hey president when you uh when you uh finish the academy just inbox me i can get you on <laughs> oh no, i really like monroe county <laughs> well, 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 well i'm not i'm not i'm not tied in with, with monroe uh just of just not not them but they, that is a good they have a good uh thing going down there real good they top notch down there i gotta ask um, anyone that's Bib, Bib makes a lot more money. It's not though. about the money. I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm Chase kidding. a peace no, of no, mind. No. I tell people all the time. I understand. Chase a peace of mind. In let me ask you guys. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, when I, it, it, I, I really brought this topic, the topic of dem- uh, demented. Is any of that word in a category versus crisis, uh, uh, mental health crisis versus uh, demented? Which ones in your? I'm gonna start with um, Ron. I know Ron. I'm pretty sure he knows some directives in his department. I know he's reservist. Do, would Would you say demented is in your directives or mental health crisis? Well, no. They told us, you know, as far as that, that's kind of in a sense like labeling a person or something. You don't have that medical backing. To, to diagnose somebody, you know, it's all the same as calling them crazy, like the guy said earlier. You know, you don't have that medical backing to say, well, this person is crazy. This is why they acted like this. Or this is why they're, you know, behaving the way that they are. So mental health Thank crisis you. would definitely be okay. more, or episode even, you know, um, would, would, would be more, you know, appropriate just in terms of, of that interaction. You can't yeah. you can't sit up here and say, you know, a person is, right. is, is crazy or, or, or demented, like yeah. And I'm agree. I'm just assuming too. Jack Frost, you agree? Mental health crisis. Yes. Um. Um. Yes, I agree. Mental health crisis. You you you'd say mental health crisis? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. how it's written in our policies. Yeah, I I was hoping this person would come in so he could hear all of us here. You know, to to make him a better police officer, not to say trigger words and 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 a hope. And another trigger statement. I hope you never say this because you're a younger one, Boricua. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Stay away from that statement, please. <laughs> you know. So, and also, you brought up something uh, earlier, Lawrence, uh, in, just in regards to how we talk to citizens. And I try to tell officers all the time, especially new officers, 
and just all officers in general, especially when, on my shift, is understand that some of these citizens, listen, inflation is high. Everything is high. People are having a hard time, uh, you know, financially and everything. Everybody wants to hit the police lottery. Sometimes when y'all pulling people over and going to calls, they're not even upset with you. They just, they just, uh, what they're doing is they just looking you up, looking you up and down. And, and especially, and citizens love officers who have short tempers because if they could just get you to say something, and trust me, their cameras and their recorders are on. If they could just get you to say something out of line, and because they know these agencies are going to pay, they get you to say something out of line or act out of character. They just want so they can get. Uh, that police lottery money when they, when they sue. Because the other agency going to say, look, let's just pay them. But you're going to pay the price because you making the agency lose money. Don't fall for it. When you're walking up to the traffic stop, understand, just act as if 10 cameras are recording you. That's what I tell my officers all the time. When you Anything you do, I don't care if it's just a simple, you're doing a simple ticket for running the stop sign. You write that, you write that citation and you act accordingly as if this is going to the grand jury tomorrow and going to be televised on TV. You, it's, it's, what is it called? Integrity. You act a certain way, the same way, even if nobody's looking. Because I'm telling you, these people just want to sue now. They just want to make money now. That's it. They, they're not even upset for real. They just want to say, why you pull me over, you stupid cop, blah, blah, blah. And then you getting all upset the whole time. They like, when you walking back to your car, they're like, look, let's try to get him. I think this him. I, let's try to get him or her. I think they got a bad attitude. They'll snap. Let's get him. Let's get him. And you're falling for the, you're falling for the game. It's just a game. They're playing the game. They want to get paid. Um, I think the younger generation of cops are already looking for that, though. They're already assuming that they're videotaping. And where it falls is that older generation where they're like, okay, we're not used to this. Um, and then they jump into something else, and then there's litigation. And then it ends up on YouTube. But, okay, I, that, Modigo, I got to tell you, the interesting part is I just watched a video earlier today, and I did, a, I stitched it, um, of a police officer. This was last year. He, he pulled someone over because someone gave him the middle finger. And I'm like, what? I, I, that really freaking irks me. Because you know how many middle fingers I've seen? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it for the first time maybe my first year in. And I was actually on my phone. I was on my cell phone with my sergeant at a call um, asking him a question about something. And someone just drove by real slow and flipped me off. And I was like, I just waved. I'm like, uh, that's it. Hey, it was really confusing to me. Like, and then I realized um, it was because of the badge. It's because of what I wear. And, and good. I'm glad. You know what, guys? You know, I'm glad. Bodie, please stay humble because, true, you earned your badge. You can the only disrespect your badge. No member of the public can disrespect your badge. They didn't earn it. You did. Very important that you understand that. Um, um, I, 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 it bothers me that officers get upset. Did you see it gave me the finger? I'm like, so? <laughs> okay, I gave you the finger. Big deal. They teach you this in the academy. Don't make a big deal out of it. So what? I've heard some. I've heard some garbage said to me, and I, and it, I'm like, it goes in one ear and out the other, like how, how it should. And that's it. Simple as that. Um, listen, guys, I gotta split. I gotta get out of here because I gotta make dinner. Uh, but I want to tell you this. Uh, it's gonna be um, what's for dinner? Breaded fish. Um, breaded beer, uh, beer fish, beer breaded fish, yeah, beer breaded fish, and fries. Huh? Not demented fish. What'd you say? <laughs> no, not demented fish. Said not Crazy demented fish. fish. I want to thank you. Hey, thank you guys for being here. Please, uh, if, if 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 um uh if we I like this open dialogue. I'm sure we'll have a t you know sometimes we have a lot of people. Sometimes we don't. It depends on the situation. Usually, I'm, I I started at ten o'clock. But today, this I wanted this person so that come in so they can actually um, hear what they're supposed to say and do, not not what he thought was okay to say. But um, either way, uh, this is still a good dialect. I, I, this is a lot of education. Everybody's learning, and I want to appreciate you guys being here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Sure. Hey, wait, really quick before you get off, have you guys done anything on auditors yet? I'm waiting for the day. I haven't seen a lot of auditors. What, what about <laughs> auditors? <laughs> oh, man. Just the video, or just, just the live on auditors. Like I said, I've been seeing a lot of auditor videos as of late. This, man, some of these guys, man, are just... Well, from what I've been seeing, actually, as of recently, some of these guys, they're not as smart as they think they are. And it's actually, I've seen two videos today where these guys are calling themselves auditing, you know, police interaction. But in turn, one of them getting brought up on charges. 
Like, what uh, shut up. Up. I gotta tell you guys this. I'm not. I, uh, I like have a been, baby. Um, I love it. Um, audited or whatever. Um, as long as you know, if it's on public property, there's nothing else to say. It's public. There's nothing else to say. There's 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 no need to 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 um um uh, engage with those type with when those situations is I mean especially the post I mean the, the public buildings if if there's you know and most of the time cop police officers should do their best first ask questions because there are almost everything's posted in these public buildings you can read before you engage with that member of the public go hey you gotta go. Because most of, again, if you read, you don't have to worry about any of this. You don't have to say anything. You can just tell people, hey, it's a public building. Um, they could be here in this area. I know because I've done it. So I, so I, that's what I know. So it's, it's, it, I, some of these other auditors, like there's, a, there's one auditor, I think his name is Rodriguez, or I can't remember his last name. He got actually arrested because he actually, you know, you got to be careful. You can't, you know, you, you know, you get so hard cased. I think they get, the judge gave him six months in prison. I'm like, whoa! So, but he, he was really out there. He, well, I think what he did was out of he got out of hand with his audit, and that's my personal opinion. But um, welcome in, uh, um, uh, Charles. Can't stay long, but uh, I, I, you, you, I know you've been one here for a while. Um, let's welcome in, uh, Charles. Hey, thank you, Lawrence. Thank you very much. And first of all, this this your form is so very important to again listening guys. This these officers reassures me what I know to be true that. Most officers are like you, you gentlemen are. I mean, 99.9% of you guys are the way that you're speaking because you didn't know I was here and you were being honest. And so it, it's reinforcing to me because, I mean, you're out there to do good. And so um, as far as Ron John talking about the auditors, <clears throat> I may or may not allegedly one of those guys, allegedly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and who's the, wait, who's the, wait, who's the Secret Service guy? Antonio, I don't live in Dallas. I'm in Wichita, Kansas. Um <laughs> But here's the thing. This is why I, I, this is why Lawrence and I are brothers. Uh, because this side of law enforcement must be shown, okay? Because you guys didn't know I was here, okay? And this is how most people. This is how you guys are. Not what's on the news. Not from some of my videos. Those are those are those are those are unfortunate encounters. That's not how things are, okay? And so when people understand how things are, it's going to make such a better. It's going to make the things better. Um, it's going to make your life better and my life better for sure. Rats. Okay, so I mean, it is important that people see this side of you guys, okay? Because what what the media focuses on, and I stopped doing it, by the way, is the negative stuff because it sells, it gets clicks, right? I stopped doing it because that's not that's not the narrative, that's not the truth, okay? I want I'm about the truth, and so the truth is, they're like they're, they, they go to you guys wake up in the morning and you were you're out there to do good, okay? That must be that must be not exposed. That must be shown because people don't know. I don't know this because they see all this negative stuff on the news because because that's, that's what sells. But ninety nine point nine percent of police officers are like you. For the love of God, I mean, Ali was on my he was on my Lawrence was on my live the other day, and we were having discussions about this, you know, about this. And he was in the he was in the, he was in the comments, but I mean, I saw him. I was like, I was happy he was there because my audience, I mean, you know, I'm like four thousand followers, maybe. <clears throat> Anyways, but they <laughs> <laughs> they got to see. Yeah, yeah, that's upstart somewhere, right? Yeah, upstart somewhere. Um, so, um, and so, um, they got to see us interacting and how we always are, right? And the, we get to bounce, we get to bounce ideas off each other, okay? And and what what? So I could come to you with things you might not hear from somebody else because they don't want to speak to you about it, right? Um, but and vice versa, mind you, right? And so, um, I may or may not been made privy to some certain areas that the department is not acting as they should be. Okay, and so right, um, right. that's important because what you guys do, you're in a dangerous job, and you can't just um, put in a slip note in the in the box and say somebody did something wrong because that could affect your life, right? And so that being said, I respect that, and so you can't just say, "Hey, people always say, well, the, uh, the good cops aren't good cops; they don't tell the bad cops." It's not that simple, <laughs> you know, not that simple. And so, um, because this is not that it's not that simple, because you, you, what you do affects how people coming back you up. Right. So 
I don't, I don't, I don't let people get that excuse. I, I just, no, no, no. It's not that simple. And then on my live, I don't allow it to be honest with you guys. And so I invite you guys up. I mean, seriously, been following me. I'll follow y'all back just because this is what makes change, gentlemen. This here, this exchange right here, makes change because most police officers are like y'all. Okay, and the, and the youngster down here, but he got, man, and dude, I, I can help you, man. I've been on both sides of it. I mean, I, I've meaning I can show you what the people are saying and what their fears are. And we shouldn't be afraid of you guys, but that fear is real, man, because these a couple of dumbass cops have made it that way. Where you guys are out there doing your job and you care, and you're about to go home and you're going to feed your family, right? And so, but you're there, your intentions are pure. And, and all of a sudden, you come across some people that might be in my followers or whatnot, and they're automatically at, at to their tents. It makes a tense situation. It makes it more dangerous when it doesn't have to be because all this BS they show in the news and on some of, these, some of these channels. I debunked them. I got enough followers to debunk what they're saying. You come across somebody who, hey, Ron John, you come across some of the auditors right. who, are getting, who are not coming correct, you let me know about it. You hear me? I'm being honest with you about this, brother, because I can make a difference about that stuff. Be <laughs> respectful, Ty. Uh, they, uh, um, thanks, oh, Mr. Charles. I got to hurry up and go away. Okay. YBC, I, he came in once. Thank you very much. Uh, YBC, did you have anything you want to say? Add or? Yeah, what's going on, man? I saw, hey, uh, YBC, I saw what's, what's going on. YBC, what's going on? I saw one of your last videos that you posted about that, um, uh, about the officers who, uh, you know, uh, what, they, they pulled that, uh, um, they pulled that, uh, he pulled that lady over for, uh, giving him the middle finger, then arrested her for, what was it, it uh, yeah. not signaling for a lane change? Now, I, I couldn't believe that. Right? That's, that's what we're talking about. Technically, the middle finger could have been the signal for the lane change. I, I, I couldn't believe that. When, when I got, I'm looking, I had to stitch it, but I'm like, dude, seriously? Yeah, that, that, that made no sense at all. And see, and see, that's and that's part of the issue that I have with the whole muting the body camera things. Because his superior was there and he was having a conversation with his superior to to uh to try to figure out how to justify and legitimize the arrest. But they muted their body that's cameras and then started talking about that. They should. That's why. I'm, that's why I don't think they should be allowed to mute their body cameras because because they were talking about doing something illegal in order to legitimize the uh, the arrest that he made. The only the only reason why we heard it was because her phone was still recorded. Right. Um, why we see? I got that's not all departments because we weren't allowed to mute our mute our um um record um uh, camcorders. We weren't allowed. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's all departments, but but I, li but I live I live in Chicago. They're they're definitely allowed to do it in Chicago because I've seen I've seen multiple multiple instances of them muting their body cameras. Like uh, it was a it was a uh, what was it a uh, uh, a no it was a no knock warrant. And they kicked in this this lady's door, which was the wrong address, and had this lady standing naked in her own house because she was in a the shower. They had her standing that. naked in her own house while cops were just going through her house and going through her drawers. And, they, and she was just standing there naked. Nobody tried to get her anything to cover herself up. I think it took them like anywhere from like eight to ten minutes before somebody uh, got her something Wait. to cover herself up. She was just standing there naked. And while, while after they after they uh, rummaged around her apartment, they muted their body cameras and started talking off camera. Okay, so let me, let me, let me, okay, so let me be a little more active. Why are we taking it off in Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the only time we can use our, 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 our we can't the body cam if it's, we're told to do so by the sergeant. By exactly, but that's what I'm right. saying. So that's the only the, reason. The guy, I, I, the guy that uh, pulled over the lady, that's what it was. His his superior came and told him to mute. That's what I'm saying. That nobody should be allowed to mute. Your superior should not be uh, uh, um, telling you to mute, and they should not be allowed to mute at all. Because if something needs to be taken out, like if somebody, you know, requests a body camera or whatever, and what they're saying is uh, private information, whatever it may be, that should be able to be redacted later because they do it all the time. Like when before body cam footage goes on YouTube straight from the department, they'll mute out people's names. They'll mute out people's addresses. They'll blur out people's uh, IDs if they're shown on the body camera. They'll do they'll do all that after the fact. 
So there's no reason right. to mute the body right. camera because anything that needs to be taken out can be can always be redacted later. There's no reason for it. Well, and I, I would agree. Okay, there is a reason for muting your body cam. Um, um I, I'll give you one, especially when there's um pew pewing and there's there's some you know unaliving. That's one of the reasons why they mute the body cam. The the mute it, not it's still rolling, but um. They mute it. That's one of the reasons. But again, like I said, we are not allowed to mute. Well, I don't worry about it anymore, but mute unless the supervisor says do it. That, that's the only reason why. But, you know, we can't just do it ourselves. So that's, 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 um, I, and I'm not, I, again, that that's at, at the supervisory level. And I understand what you're saying. They should be able to mute it. And I, I, I kind of have to agree with that too. But hey guys, I got to get out of here. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for being on here. Uh, let's kind of keep this up. I'm going to try to do it um, at least. It's been kind of busy. I'm going to try to do it at least uh, two, three times a week. Uh, but you guys, enjoy your day. And uh, you guys, enjoy your holiday for tomorrow. Happy 4th. Happy 4th. Chaotic. Happy 4th, right, man. Yeah, I'm Hi, I, I forgot to say hello to you. Yeah, everybody. Too.